OK, so we're here at five o'clock. I'll go ahead and get started. So thanks everyone for either hopping on for this call or we'll be watching this later uh, coming back to the recording. We appreciate you taking the time to spend this hour with us as we do our July virtual learning series, which we're focusing on managing your career ex expectations. And I'm happy to have Deanna Miller with me. So I'll have her introduce herself in a couple minutes. But just a little background about me. My name's Kayla. I've been in the dental field for about 20 years. Um, I've been with Aspen for 12 of those years. Um, initially, I started in private practice. And so I want to just kind of share the knowledge that that I have, but it's more specifically on what Deanna has as she is one of our territory hygiene managers um, and what she sees in the office um, day in and day out. So we'll go ahead and go through this little PowerPoint here. This is going to be interactive. Um, so please make sure you do stay on until the end of the presentation because we will be announcing the $100 Lululemon gift card. Um, and then also just some instructions here on how to get started. You will go to menti.com and just put in that code or you can scan the QR code there and do that. Give you a couple minutes. Right. So like I said, this will be interactive, so please stay engaged, um, have your camera on and your phone out because there will be some questions throughout the presentation. And before I go to this slide here, I'll go ahead and pass this on to Deanna um, and let her introduce herself and take it away. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Deanna Miller. Um, like Kayla mentioned, I am a Territory Manager of Hygiene Support here with Aspen. I have the privilege of supporting, mentoring, and training um, 30 offices of hygienists, about 48 hygienists in 30 offices. I've been doing this for two years with Aspen, but I've been a hygienist for over 15 years and I've worked in various settings, private practice, small group practice, other DSO settings, and I love being a part of Aspen. I love the opportunity that it presents not only myself, but other hygienists and clinicians. And so I'm happy to discuss some of those opportunities with you guys and tell you why I love working with this organization and the autonomy that it brings. I live in Ohio with my family, uh, my husband and my two beautiful kids and my two fur babies. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a little bit about me. I want us to go ahead and get started by going through the content that Kayla has so wonderfully prepared for us. And I'm going to. Yeah, scroll it We're, here. I don't know. I can't see it from your end, Kayla. Oh, Do you need can't. to re screen share? Let me, yeah, let me try that again. Hold on. Here we go. OK, let me know when you can see that. Perfect. Yes. That is right. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. All right. So would love to know a little bit about you guys. So I said a little bit about us. Take a couple of seconds and respond. What is something about you? So it's asking, yeah, you probably can't see that this in, but it's just saying where they're located. So we've got one oh, in Genesee, perfect. Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, perfect. My geography with Illinois, not <laughs> super savvy. I know pretty much Chicago. Everything, yeah. That's it. <laughs> but welcome. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. All right. I'm going to move it to the next slide here. All right, so. We're going to be talking about what to expect um, in today's presentations. We'll show you the importance of managing expectations in your work environment and highlight some important things that can help you in managing those work expectations and also your work life balance, your professional success and expectations. So we'll kind of talk about all of those and encompass how they can work together for your overall success and happiness. So what are some of your dental hygiene career expectations? 
It's a very broad question. I know I get a lot of answers to this question <laughs> with the hygienists in my market. Hopefully we'll get, there we go. Fair pay, good. So when we talk about fair pay, obviously that ranges from geographic area to geographic area. But, you know, are you investigating what some of the ranges are? Are you investigating, are we talking to other colleagues, other offices? Um, other hygienists, other classmates about, you know, what their compensation packages look like. Appropriate times with patients. Yes, this was a big one for me personally. Um, career growth. Love that. And I think, too, something to notice with fair pay. Um, I do feel like compensation is all encompassing. It isn't necessarily just an hourly rate. It is a total benefits package, a total compensation package. What are you getting beyond that hourly rate that makes the difference? For instance, if you're getting paid $50 an hour, but every time you don't have a patient show up in your chair, the doc sends you home, is that really equating to the overall salary that you're looking for, right? Are you getting guaranteed hours? What happens when your patients don't show up? Um, what happens when your morning falls apart or your afternoon falls apart? Are they gonna call you in late? Are they gonna make you leave early? Um, I had a dentist one time that made me clock down to minimum wage to make phone calls when I was a hygienist, which, you know, it's a little shisty, but it happens still, right? Um, so beyond the hourly rate, what is your day and your counted on compensation really look like? What are some of the benefits, right? Vacation time, paid time off. How much time off does your doctor take, right? Do they go out of the country for three weeks out of the year and you're just supposed to sit home unpaid? What does that look like? What is the plan when the doctor's out? Do you get to work? Will you have hours? Um, 401k, um, short leave absences, long-term absences, maternity leave, all of these things, including career growth opportunities, are all important when we're like considering compensation, pay, and getting that consistent salary that we're looking for. Because I know a lot of clinicians in private practice and even in some other environments where they make a lot hourly but they don't incentivize their hours get cut um i've actually quite a few hygienists join our organization because they're like well i'm supposed to work full time but i only end up working about three days a week or 30 hours right so all great questions to ask when you're interviewing your employer about benefits pay and compensation those are open conversations that you guys want to have and don't be afraid to ask the tough questions especially with things like appointment times how long am I going to get with my patient, right? Do you get to set your provider preference? Or is the doctor like, nope, you've got to do it in 45 minutes. Nope, you get a half hour. Nope, you get an hour. Um, we do in our organization have provider preference. I would say most of the time providers are taking about 60 minutes with their recare appointments and perio maintenances and profies. And then typically it's provider preference as well with scaling and replaning procedures. I would say on average in my territory specifically, clinicians are doing about a quad every 30 to 45 minutes. So again, when you've got a severely involved perio patient that hasn't been as a dentist in 20 years, that you're gonna ask for more time and your office manager and your doctor and your front desk will be happy to oblige in giving you the time that you need to provide quality care for that patient. Um, career growth. Um, I know that about five years in to being a clinical dental hygienist, I was gr outgrowing the four walls of my private practice. Um, you get to a point where you're just at the peak of that environment 
and that setting and you want the next thing you want more not every clinician wants to leave the chair um, there are plenty of clinicians that love working in their private practice for 20 years and they never leave and that's wonderful but there's a lot of clinicians too that maybe do have aspirations of something beyond clinical dental hygiene and aspen dental does a wonderful job of helping support develop embrace those clinicians and their career aspirations beyond what's going on right now. I know, Kayla, you were a chairside clinical hygienist at Aspen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for 12, 12 years. Yep. I've been with have, Aspen and kind of moved through. Yep. And we've got people on our digital support team. We've got office managers that were hygienists. We've got all kinds of roles in our organization that were clinicians, were hygienists that wanted to step out, and try something different, get development, and go into that next step. And part of what I do too is help bring that out and help encourage and develop and support those transitions as they may need to happen. So all great things to look for when trying to manage those expectations. Yeah. I'm going to have you pause for a second, Deanna, because I'm going to go back. There were a few people that hopped onto the call, so I want to make sure that they have the instructions on joining the mentee um, because this is interactive. So yeah. we'll, with the PowerPoint, there is some interaction with just popping in some answers, um, doing multiple choice, and just want to keep this engaging. So whoever has hopped on here, you just simply go to menti.com on your phone. Um, you'll be then prompted to put in the code, which is listed right there for for you and then once that gets entered in you'll have like a little heart icon and you'll just click the heart and like it and then you'll be entered in um it should be anonymous your name won't be associated to it so you can feel free to answer however you want and no one will know so make it as comfortable as possible we love brutal honesty we yes. want all of the tough questions <laughs> and it makes it just more fun to have the engaged <laughs> We want you to get all of the things you're looking for out of this segment for sure. Yeah. And Presley and Presley and Olivia. Great. Okay, awesome. I can finally see it. It was blocked by my other screen. So I'm like, who is it that's here? And if you want, Kayla, can we bump back over to yeah. um, what they're looking for and their expectations and give them an opportunity to add to the word bubble? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So if you two can click or just kind of give like a thumbs up if you're in, um, that would be great. And for hopping on, I'm Deanna Miller. Yes. I'm a hygienist, <laughs> been a hygienist for over 15 years, and I've worked in all kinds of dental settings. Also fun fact, right. I was a dental assistant and office manager. That's awesome. You have all the views of all the positions yes. in the office, which Thank helps so, so much. much. So much. Someone put in the code. Hold on. She typed in the chat. Only you or can type. Yeah, you can do it only. You can do it on your phone. Yep. You can go to your your search bar. So what will happen is you'll go to that on your Safari um, Internet there on your phone and you'll just put in menti.com um, and then you'll enter in that code. And it will present the presentation on your phone so you can still watch the presentation and um, answer at the same time. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> South Carolina. Oh, I love oh, South nice. Carolina. I know. We go to Hilton Head every year. I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Awesome. So we have both in South Carolina. We got two in South Carolina. Oh, she said she just needs that code again, Kayla. What's oh, that sure. code? And I can type it in the chat. So it's 221. Two, wait, 2221-6309. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1 Yep. Yep. There we go. I sent that in the chat for you, Olivia. Oh, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Awesome. Or as my friend would say, Wisconsin. <laughs> I love that. Well, awesome. We're just all over here. Because where are you now? Where are you at, Deanna? You're in Ohio? I'm in Ohio yeah. today. Yes, I am not in West Virginia today. I'm back home. So I'm in Ohio. Great. All right. All right. So, so let's go ahead. We'll go, go to this. Over. Here we go. 
what are some of your dental hygiene career expectations? And we have a few examples in there of what you might have, but we'd love to hear what, what some of your expectations are. might be all <laughs> or they're being shy I know yeah it might, that might be the only expectations that's that's great okay well let's keep oh here we go oh fair pay perfect friendly okay. office culture is really important I would agree with that 110 mm percent -hmm. agreeing on patient care mm -hmm. that is huge right mm -hmm. our your doctor, your hygienist, your front desk, all aligned, right? There's nothing worse than walking into an office and recommending a gingivitis treatment for a patient or scaling and root planning to have maybe a doctor or an office manager go, oh, they don't need that. They just, just can't we just do their free cleaning, right? Mm -hmm. That's like a knife to the heart, right? but it happens. It does. So, you know, are you in an environment where when you present those clinical findings to your doctor, are they going to value hygiene the way that you value hygiene? Are they going to back you up? Is your front desk team going to back you up and help you get that patient the acceptance that they want? That is a large part of what I do in my role is being the bridge between all those elements. Thankfully, a lot of my offices, actually, I'd like to say all of my offices do this really well. And all of our doctors have a very hygiene first standard of care and won't proceed with restorative without hygiene, which is stupendous. I love mm -hmm. that, that our doctors really value that. And when maybe there are instances where that starts slipping or there's a disagreement, part of what I do is come into that environment, try to figure out where the misses are, where the miscommunication is, how we can level set on getting patients the care that they need and really doing what's best for our patients' overall health, which we know is maintaining their chronic disease. If they have periodontal disease, it's a chronic inflammatory disease that affects their whole body health. So how can we tackle that as a team, aligning on treatment, getting our patients the treatment that they need? Again, Huge. That's one of my top three for sure when looking for an environment. Also, culture. Nobody wants to go to work with a bunch of grumpy pants. We know <laughs> that, right? We want to show up, have fun, smile, make our patients smile, be a team. Definitely teamwork. Great. All good things. Oh, I love this video. Okay, Kayla, go ahead. Take it away. This is just going to kind of set the stage for expectations. Oh, we don't have sound. You might need to enable the sound, Kayla. You're mute. It says you're muted. Okay. I'll Let's try, try again. See. I'll try it again. Is it working? No. Can you enable the sound settings in your in your Teams, or is it Zoom? I can't, it's yeah, I probably can. Bear with us, guys. Technical difficulty here. It's under more settings, maybe. My settings. There's one that's like enable audio or something like that. I always struggle to find it. I know. Um Let's see. Okay. Wow. I think maybe under language and speech, is it turn on speaker coach or no? We can try and see. Um, Sorry, guys. We are definitely clinicians, not <laughs> IT experts. So. Uh, and I usually use Zoom. And so this is why I'm kind of at a loss here. Okay. Same. I know where it is in Zoom. Okay, let's see. 
maybe I'm going to stop sharing really quick and then I'm going to reshare and see if that helps. If not. Oh, here we go. Yep, got it. I found it. I found it. Where Thanks was for being it? patient, everyone. <laughs> You'll have to show me later. Yes, I will show you later. Bob secretly crept right. into his lab and he hung Can you signs restart? on all of the yeah. rat cages. Some of the signs. This is a man named Bob Rosenthal. And early in his career as a research psychologist, he did something very devious. Late one night, Bob secretly crept into his lab and he hung signs on all of the rat cages. Some of the signs said that the rat in the cage was incredibly smart, and some of the signs said that the rat in the cage was incredibly dumb, even though neither of these things was true. So then Bob brings this group of experimenters into his lab and says, for the next week, some of you are going to get these very smart rats and some these very dumb rats. And your job is to run your rat through a maze and record how well it does. So what did they find? It was not even close. The smart rats did almost twice as well as the dumb rats. Even though they were the, the smart rats were not smart and the stupid rats were not stupid. They were just all the same kind of average North Dakotan rat. <laughs> that almost to me sounds like the stuff of science fiction, like telekinesis. Yeah, no one really believed him at first. I was having trouble publishing any of this. But what Bob eventually figured out was that the expectations that the experimenters had in their head actually translated into a whole set of tiny behavior changes. Handling rats and handling them more gently can actually increase the performance of rats. This kind of dynamic happens in people too. You may be standing farther away from someone you have lower expectations for. You may not be making as much eye contact. And it's not something you can put your finger on. That's Carol Dweck, a psychologist at Stanford. She was one of several researchers who explained all kinds of surprising things that expectations can influence, like teacher expectations can raise or lower a student's IQ score. A mother's expectations can affect the drinking behavior of her middle schooler. Military trainer's expectations can literally make a soldier faster or slower. Think about that. As you go through the world, the expectations of other people are constantly acting on you, literally making you stronger or weaker, smarter or dumber, faster or slower. Yeah. So my question was, how far does this go? So Carol, for example, if I expect that if somebody jumps off a building, they will be able to fly, that's not going to work out so well, right? Right. So what does science know about where we should draw the line? That line is moving. As we come to understand things that are possible and mechanisms through which a belief affects an outcome or one person affects another person, that line can move. So I love that video because I think it reminds us as humans that like expectations are something that we not only project, but we put on ourselves. And a lot of the times, like our expectations of ourselves, sometimes we create our own barriers. Sometimes we let other people's expectations influence our behaviors. Well, they don't think I can do it, so I can't do it, right? Or they believe I can do it, so I'm going to do it. And this is very powerful and i've seen this myself um, in my own career growth and development but i see it almost every day in the clinicians that i have the pleasure of supporting and mentoring and it's really remarkable when you can untap people's potential and help them look through and be honest about their expectations um, because it is an open line of communication and a constantly moving line, right? So here's another, I believe this one is a back and forth, right? Why yeah. is it important to manage work expectations? And I think that we're going to rank these from most important to least, correct, Kayla? Or pick their most yes. important one? Yep, on, the, on your little, on your phone screen, it should have what you would want to select as your first. Um, and then you'll put your second, third, 
and forth. What you think is like the most important. Let me know when all the responses are in, Kayla. Sure. So far we've got one. Okay, we're at two. We're just waiting on one more. Yeah, I like the established boundaries for sure. That's a very important one. Yes. I'm going to tell you guys a little story about establishing boundaries if I can. Um, They're all in too. Every, everything's in. Perfect. So I love these. I love that establish boundaries and create a positive and healthy work environment are one and two. Um, and I learned this lesson um, myself. I would say about three years into practice, um, I worked in an office and we saw Medicare, Medicaid patients on Thursdays. We saw all of our regular patients the whole week, but we only saw our Medicare, Medicaid patients on Thursdays. And the doctor that I worked for um, had a little bit of an issue about how long I was taking with these Medicare, Medicaid patients. Um, I got full transparency, 30 minutes with all of my patients, but he came to me and said, I need you to spend 15 minutes with these Medicare Medicaid patients because I only get X amount of dollars for these patients and you need to do these faster. And I said, respectfully, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going to change the standard of care that I'm providing because of the patient's insurance that you choose to participate with. Um, and he said, well, it's my office, I'm the boss, and you do what I say. And I said, well, then what I'm hearing is I don't work on Thursdays. And he looked at me like I had two heads, and he turned on his heels, and he walked away, I'm sure to complain to the office manager. But I stood my ground, and I established my boundaries. Mm -hmm. I was not willing to waver on what I was already getting shorted on patient care time, because of a decision that he made. And my decision was to opt out of working Thursdays if that's truly what he was establishing was a boundary. Now, I will tell you, he never gave me grief about how long I was ever spending with a patient ever again. And I never heard another word about it for the <laughs> other two and a half years that I worked there. So establishing boundaries is something that is hard to do. It is hard sometimes to have those crucial conversations and say, you know what, no. This is an ethical thing for me. This is what I need. This is what I want. But it is an important conversation to have because I can't tell you how many hygienists, both in Aspen and when I was in private practice or listening to colleagues of mine, other hygienists that I know, um, I'm very involved in my ADHA, ODHA professional organization. And I listen to clinicians all the time go, well, the doctor wants this. Oh, the doctor wants that. And I'm like, well, what do you want? Mm -hmm. what, what about what you want? If, if you want to diagnose perio, then present your case about diagnosing perio. If you want more time with your patients, present your case about why you want more time with your patients. Um, and I, I've had countless hygienists come to me um, until it's too late, until they're too bubbled up and they're too frustrated because they haven't expressed their concerns or set those boundaries. And then they think the only option is to throw in the towel and try to start somewhere new. But I will tell you, if you start somewhere new, and still don't establish boundaries, your problems will follow you everywhere you go, right? It may not be that exact same problem. It might be something else, but still that root cause is there, right? And creating a positive and healthy work environment. There is something beautiful about having radical candor and having that open line of communication, establishing those boundaries that does truly create a environment of healthy, honest teamwork and collaboration. I mean, we all know that the dental field is very heavily dominated by women. It used to be mostly male dentists and then female hygienists and dental assistants, right? And now actually den female dentists are outpacing male dentists. So we've got even more females in the game now. And we know that sometimes those environments can get unhealthy, right? For one reason or another. So what are we doing to help create boundaries, establish those positive relationships, have that open line of communication, 
to give us an environment we enjoy coming to every day. I know I spend sometimes it feels like more time at work than I do at home with my kids and my dogs. So I want to make sure that that environment's one that I'm happy to go to, right? Um, creating trust. I think it's important that anybody and in any situation is in an environment where they feel like they can trust the people that they work with and the people that they work for. Um, trust is like probably my number one personality trait that I look for. And when I establish any relationship, whether it's a friendly relationship, a colleague, um, I want to know I can trust on you and depend on you and know that what you're telling me is true and honest. And then aligning of professional goals. I do think that, you know, everyone tends to put their own professional goals, you know, priority. So when you can get in an environment where you can be open and honest about what your professional goals are, that's great. I remember being a chairside hygienist in an office working three 12 hour days while I went back to school for my bachelor's degree in business. And full discretion, I didn't tell the dentist I was working for that I was going back to school because I was afraid that they were not going to want me there if they found out I had aspirations beyond the chair, that they wouldn't want me to be there to take care of their patients or that they might, you know, tell me to hit the road. Um, and it was a little uncomfortable when the dentist was like, so I hear you're graduating in a month with your business degree. And I was like, yep. She's like, so what do you want to do? Um, and that ended up actually resulting in my first office manager job. So in that case, it worked out. But I do remember having that that fear and that like unsureness about like, oh, no, what if my professional goals are hindering what they want? And I can't be open and honest with them about my career growth and opportunity. Um, and that's also what I love about Aspen is because we we love to see our hygienists grow in whatever avenue that is. So, all right, how to manage expectations at work. Establishing workplace expectations can help align your professional goals with your abilities and create a trusting professional relationship with your coworkers and supervisors. So I think I know we just touched on that a little bit. Through those expectations, we establish those boundaries, we set goals, we learn about those whom we interact with, you know, getting to know the people that we work with and figuring out what our common goals are, right? What are those common things that we can agree on that are shared goals that can help motivate us and do good things for our patients and for ourselves, right? Managing expectations is also in help, important to help create that positive work environment where we thrive. And I love this part, increase your skills, right? Having that open and honest environment for feedback that flows both from clinic doctor to hygienist or mentee to hygienist or hygienist to DAs and that constant back and forth of honest, open trust positive work environment allows an environment where feedback is a gift and not a punishment. And to be completely transparent, the only way I've grown as a clinician in 15 years was being open to feedback and having those relationships that I trusted in to help me increase my skills and abilities along the way. So I encourage you, wherever your journey takes you as a clinician, keep that open mind, be willing and be open to listen to any wisdom, advice, feedback that anyone's willing to give you, because it might not always pertain to you particularly, but you can always find nuggets and important things that can help you develop as a clinician and a provider and as a person. So I love that. All right. So I want to hear from you. What are some of your career goals? Heat. Like being somewhere hot, like being in Florida. Hey, like you're muted, huh? I can't hear you.
Yeah, maybe the heat. They're wanting the heat. Maybe there's somewhere cold in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, there might be a tiny soda where it's cold. They're like, I'm going to yeah. Florida. I'm going to Texas. Great patient care. Yes. Quality of care and ethics have always driven me in my career pursuits. Provide the best care. Yep. And for me, personally, best care was having that autonomy to, to diagnose and treat my patients the way that they felt they need to be treated, you know, abiding by the AAP guidelines, staying abreast of, you know, updates and changes, laser therapy, antibiotic therapy, you know, working for a dentist that allowed me to practice those things or explore those options instead of being like, oh, we don't do that. Or, oh, just do a cleaning. They're getting a crown next week and they've maxed their benefits. So do a profi, right? That was always what drove me to a next to help with white coat syndrome. Yeah. To help put our patients at ease, to make them not be afraid to come to the dentist, educate them that, you know, preventative care is the best care. Don't avoid us. Don't stay away. We want to take care of you. We want to help you. I love that. Those are all great things. Getting comfortable with technology. Yes. Our profession is growing and involving at such a rapid rate. Technology mm -hmm. is a huge piece of that. I know here at Aspen, we have the benefit of having 3D intraoral scanners to be able to show a patient a 3D image of their entire mouth. And I will tell you, that puts a mirror and a blocked light and an explorer to shame it is just a game changer to be able to blow up an image of their mouth and spin it around and show them that inflammation and build up and to show them that broken tooth or that open contact or whatever it is we're trying to show them. And they're like, that's what the inside of my mouth looks like. That, that's yeah, I get it. All right. Um, also, things like digital dental assistant and being able to do voice activated perio charting. Um, our clinicians can literally say 323, 323, bleeding interproximal 14, jump to the gingival margin, and they can record a comprehensive periodontal chart for their patients all by speaking it into a microphone. Um, our technology is not going to go backwards. It's only going to continue to leap forward. So aligning yourself in a practice or in an environment that gives you access to those things and stay abreast of those different types of technology and how they can be implemented in patient care and education is, is huge. Mm -hmm. All right. Managing expectations at work refers to the methods you use to establish those boundaries and goals regarding working with others, right? Creating these guidelines help us define what our personal duties are, our specific skills and what we expect to gain with those skills and how to interact with our coworkers and our career trajectory. Not everyone um, has that forward thinking mindset. I know a lot of new grads especially are like, listen, my trajectory was passing my board exams, right? <laughs> that was it. Um, so to think about maybe, you know, five, 10 years down the road, that might be really heavy right now, but don't ever stop thinking about like what that means for you as a clinician. What does it mean to you as a provider? How are you developing your skills to be better tomorrow than you were today, to be better next week than you were last week, next month than this month, so on and so forth, because that will help you keep your passion for what we do as dental hygienists and prevention specialists and, you know, disease maintenance professionals at, at all time high. You'll not lose that passion. You'll stay engaged if you constantly look at what we do and that next step as an opportunity to do better. Um, for example, if you want to raise in the coming quarter, um, you might ask your manager, to assign you maybe a project um, before your next review to help you increase your skills and your knowledge, right? Like, okay, I feel like I'm worth more. I feel like I've learned this skill. I feel like I'm worth this. So how can I demonstrate that 
to my manager, to my boss? How can I prove that that is my worth, that is my value, um, so that I can get those things that I want, right? So that I can help keep that conversation going, manage those expectations, and get me on the tra trajectory that I want. I know that with us in particular here at Aspen, all of our clinicians have the opportunity to incentivize with an untapped earning potential. So they have that ability every month to set a precedent of this is the standard of care I'm providing, this is the level of education, and um, my ability to help my patients see the value and what great care looks like, to put my patients at ease, to gain my patients' trust, to help them say yes, and that flows through into their compensation naturally. So a lot of our hygienists incentivize very well um, by growing their talents and abilities to break down those barriers for our patients and help them say yes to care. Um, managing expectations at work is important to create that structured work-life balance. We talked about that in the beginning. Some benefits of managing those expectations include establishing those healthy relationships, so healthy work relationships help you grow in your field, make new connections um, while pursuing similar goals, and then understanding your skill sets and those that help others establish a healthy work relationship. So, you know, we talk about managing expectations. We talked about fair pay, but like, what about hours? What about like days that you want to work? You know, I loved working three 12 hour days, but is that for everyone? No. So are you willing and open to having those conversations to say, listen, like, I feel like I perform at my best for my patients and myself when I work this amount of hours, when I work this amount of days, right? Um, because that'll help keep you in the right mindset. It'll keep you engaged in your career and your professional growth and development while also being able to give your best to your patients, right? Which as providers, we do. We are expected to give the same quality and care to our patient at 8 a.m. as our patient at 6 p.m., right? So how mm -hmm. can we help make that happen? Well, establishing those boundaries, having those conversations, right? Maintaining our mental health. Burnout is huge in our profession. So again, what I referred to earlier as far as like how much time do we need with our patients? Are we aligned on treatment? Are we providing our best care? Do we have the support that we need? That all helps avoid burnout, lack of engagement. Um, nothing will drive a hygienist from wanting to be a hygienist than being stuck in a chair where they have no control, no autonomy, they feel helpless, and then they do it for three or five years and they go, oh, this isn't for me anymore, I don't want to do this. When maybe they just needed to speak up and say, hey, I think I would be happier if, right? So mm -hmm. all very important in reducing your stress and maintaining your mental health. All right. I think that was the last slide. Was that the last one, Kayla? No, this is kind of expanding on, you know, why managing those expectations is so important. So we're at now providing insight. So, um, yeah, can you see my screen still? Yep, it just switched okay. over. Thank you. Did it? Okay, yep. perfect. <laughs> so providing, I knew we were getting close to the end. Um, providing insight. So those expectations help offer insight into spe specific projects and tasks, which, again, help us reduce confusion regarding our job duties. Um, an example of this might be... Um, when you have a patient in your chair and the expectation is that maybe the dentist thinks that you're looking for cavities or like giving them a heads up about cavities, but you don't realize that that's a role or there's something that you feel like you're necessarily should be responsible for. Are you guys aligned on that? Will that help provide insight? Um, I've worked in some offices where the doctor does want me to do a level of pre-diagnosis, not treatment planning or telling the patient all the things that I'm seeing, but, you know, making notes or making notations of like, hey, doc, like, 
just like when you're flipping through those bite wings, these are the things that jumped out to me. And I've had doctors that are like, stick to gums. Your lane is the gum health, the bone health. Like that's all you talk about. Leave the rest up to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So are you communicating? Do the doctors give you that insight in what they're looking for or why so that you guys are aligned? Um, empowering yourself with structure. Man, I cannot mm -hmm. stress the importance of structured and preparedness in the role of a clinical dental hygienist. Um, when we fail to prepare, we prepare to fail. Um, and that is the truth. Nothing will make you feel more in the weeds than not knowing your patient's background, not doing your chart reviews where you're looking like, what are they due for? What was their periodontal health last time? Are they due for a perio chart? When was their last x-rays? When was their last FMX? Um, being able to empower yourself to do those chart reviews, to prepare yourself for your day so you have a better idea of how things are going to shake out and what you need to accomplish for that patient, what the goal is for each of those patients in their time in your chair, what you're going to teach them in that time that they're in your chair um, will help your days just run so much smoother. Um, we already get so much thrown at us as clinicians that deal with people right? Mm -hmm. That not being prepared, at least in some level, is just a disaster waiting to happen, right? We all know mm -hmm. that we've like sat down and we think we're going to be doing this. And then that patient comes in and goes, oh yeah, by the way, my tooth fell out yesterday. And here it is. And you're like, that wasn't on the list. That wasn't, that wasn't something I was prepared to handle today, right? So preparing for your day, trying to stay structured, creating systems and processes to help you stay organized. I know it's tough when you make that transition from school into the professional environment, right? When we leave, you know, dental hygiene school and we're used to getting three hours to treat mm -hmm. our patients and now we're expected to do all of the ADHA standards of care, right? Which feels like a list of about 150, right? Of in, in 60 minutes, right? How are we going to tackle that bite by bite, bit by bit, right? Mm -hmm. How can we help prepare ourselves for that so that we don't feel overwhelmed, so that we can provide our patients quality comprehensive care um, and, and do it well, right? Um, and then enhancing communication, setting and managing expectations, can help you enhance your communication skills by collaborating with your team and providing and giving feedback. Um, also something that's different from leaving the school environment to the clinical mm -hmm. environment. I know I was a little shell-shocked um, going into a going from a clinical setting in school where the whole world revolved around dental hygiene to being a piece of a dental practice where there are, you know, front desk and it's an oversimplification, but, you know, front desk is worried about insurance and co-pays and then your dental assistants are worried about helping doctor and then your doctors are worried about, you know, decay and restorative needs and then you're a piece of that puzzle and how do you work with a team? How do you communicate? How do you figure out, you know, how to tag team and help with sterilization or asking someone for help when you need help flipping your room or, you know, when you get in the weeds, how to manage that, how to talk with the front desk about, hey, can you call Susie Q and let her know I'm running behind and maybe ask mm -hmm. her to come in 15 minutes late. Um, all those things are a big adaptation from leaving the educational environment and going into the real, you know, clinical practice. So, you know, your communication skills, coping skills, um, and working as a team and developing those relationships with all of the components of the dental team so that you guys can work cohesively to provide care for our patients. Because at the end of the day, that patient is mm -hmm. everyone's patient. It isn't just Doc's patient. It isn't just the hygienist's patient. It's the patient of the practice. So it should be everyone's priority, that patient. So. All right, so setting those realistic goals. 
expectations help establish those realistic goals. So by creating those expectations that align, we can identify achievable milestones. This is big, right? Because it is not a realistic goal that you're going to come out of school and do a full mouth SRP in 90 minutes, likely, right? It might happen, but is that a realistic goal? No, in my professional opinion, it's probably not, right? Um, so how do you look at your skill set, know what things that you're really good at, what things that you might still be struggling with and need help with? How do you communicate that and then work together to set achievable goals? Okay, well, I'm still kind of slow with scaling. So I'd really love two hours for half a mouth SRP, but... I recognize that there's maybe an opportunity for me to do it a little faster. So maybe by six months from now, my goal is to do half the mouth in 90 minutes. And then at a year for me to do half the mouth in an hour, right? Those are good bite-sized chunks. Sorry, I'm tripping on my words. Those are good bite-sized chunks and realistic goals that'll keep pushing us forward and strengthening our skill set, but being able to provide timely appointments for our patients and those efficiency points that we're able to grow as providers help us be able to treat more patients, right? So if you can see two more patients in your day by reducing your scaling and root planning times from two hours to 90 minutes for a half a mouth, then that means that's one more patient's mouth you're going to be able to make healthier each day, right? And that's a win for your patients. So, and then part of that is creating accountability after we set those goals. When we create accountability, it's not to say like you're not doing a good job or, you know, you could be doing this better. Oh, oh Susie, you said that by a year you wanted to be able to do hour long half mouth SRPs and it's still taking you 90 minutes. That's not the point of accountability. It's a reminder. It's a gentle encouragement to say, hey, this is the goal you set for yourself. This is why. How can I help you finish getting there? What do we need to do together to work together to make that a reality for you? Because I want to see you continue to grow. I want to see you continue to get better. How can we do that? So working with those team members on a shared goal, on a sim similar project to help with team cohesion and then help everyone's growth for the benefit of our patients, right? All right. So another interactive Bye. question. <laughs> So how do you manage expectations at work? So you'll just rank this by sliding. It's a sliding scale for each one. Um, and it should show up there on your phone. Yeah, I like um for sure saying communicate early and effectively is the highest one so far and holding mm -hmm. yourself and others accountable i love the communicate with supervisors too mm -hmm. um so many times i i have this um in, in my territory in the hygienist they support you know they come to me with a concern or a problem and i'm always happy to help solve the problem but the first question i ask is Oh, I am so happy to help you with this. What did your doctor and your office manager have to say about this? And how can I help? And if they answered, oh, I haven't talked to my doctor about this yet, or I haven't talked to my office manager about this yet, that's the first place I always encourage them to go. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what, Susie? I'm happy to talk to you th through this and help intervene, but I'd really like you to talk to the to your team about this first before I get involved, right? So talking with your supervisors, communicating early and efficiently and effectively, mm -hmm. reinforcing those expectations. Maybe you said, hey, guys, I need 90 minutes for that SRP. And you notice that, you know, Becky at the front desk keeps shortening your SRP appointments to squeeze in profies, right? And you're like, oh, Becky, <laughs> knock it off, right? And, you know, you're just 
suffering in silence instead of going to Becky and say, hey, Becky, I noticed that you keep shortening the appointments for active infection. And I really need that time with my patients. It's really valuable, helps me do a good job. It's really important. I need you to stop doing that, right? And then, of course, looping in your supervisors and your support team to help mm-hmm. make that happen. It's just an yeah. example. Exactly. But, And this is just quickly kind of recapping everything that we kind of, that we went over here. Because I know time is, we've got five minutes left and we don't want to take any more of your time. (laughs) So communicating, reinforcing expectations and aligning expectations. And then. Can you see that? Okay. I'm on that recap screen. Yep. Okay. So those are the three. Big takeaways, holding yourself and others accountable and communicating with your supervisors. Good. And then just to conclude this, just to see what you guys have, um, what were some of the key takeaways from tonight's presentation? We'd love to hear from you. We went through those five things. We talked about some of the things that we can do to help manage those expectations, but I'd love to hear what some of the things you guys might start implementing or that you're excited to implement when you're practicing. Mm -hmm. Better communication. Yes. Communicate. Communication is key. Speaking up about your boundaries. Yes. You are a provider. You have a license. You have a voice. You have a right to have boundaries. Teamwork. I love you can't do it all alone. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yes, you can't. Self goals. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. What I can do better. Mm -hmm. Self goals. Yes. Wonderful. I love that. Yeah. So just to kind of wrap this up and to make sure that we did a good job, we'd love you to scan this. Um survey code here. I know, Olivia, you're on your phone, so I can always email you the survey link. Um, But go ahead and you can scan this QR code. It's a really quick, just five minute evaluation form for us. That way we know how we did and how we can make this better for future webinars um, for you all. Yes. And then, yeah, just our information here. Thank you for for, for participating. Um, my email's there, and then also Deanna's email is there. So if you want or have any questions or if you need to reach out for whatever reason, we're always here. Um, if you just even have questions about how to handle situations, Deanna would be a great resource for that, being that's what she meant. She mentors hygienists all the time. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll do is we only had two of you on the call. So... I will go ahead and do like a 50-50 drawing, um, and then I will email the winner after this call. Um, yeah. And you'll have then, I'll just send you the, e- the email with the gift card in there for you. So it is a $100 gift card that one of you guys will be getting. Fingers crossed, it's one of you. <laughs> um, and yeah, so great. Yay. Yay. And so I, mean- I also put my number in the chat. So if you have any questions or there's anything that you want to know more about, or if you just need help thinking through or talking through anything, you can text me or call me. Also, if you have any questions, I know we have like a minute and a half left, but if you want to put anything (laughs) in the chat, I'm happy to answer anything in the chat, any questions that you guys might have or inquiries. Um, And I wanted to thank you all so much for spending this, you know, 56 minutes with us. We're glad that we could give you some insight and hopefully equip you with some tools to help manage your career expectations for a long, prosperous, and happy career as a dental hygienist. So I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and great evening. Yeah. So this, yes, you're welcome, Presley. Um, So if there's any, if you have a question, we've got a minute here. So go ahead and pop that in and we'll be happy to go over a little bit and answer those. So. All right. Yes. Have a great weekend as well. Yeah. Thanks, Olivia. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.